given these two options, tell me which one you would choose. Being delusionally rich and abundant or being realistically broke and miserable. And the logic tells me that most of you will jump at the first option, but the reality is most of us are, li are living the second option. Realistically broke and miserable. And such is the power of language, which is the topic for today. Language and how it absolutely is the, the, the foundation for the entirety of your life. And I'll discuss it from universal principles. I'll talk about it from how it impacts your physical. And then I'll talk about it from the power of influence and how language is everything you need to exert and exude the power you need for your life. So let's start firstly with, with the reality of where you are today and the universe and the world that you see for yourself. The idea and concept, the very basic principle that words are formulated through your thoughts and are spoken out of your mouth and essentially equates to a vibration, a frequency. And that frequency and vibration is constantly being processed by the universe around you. If you can think of it this way, rich people speak rich talk, broke people speak broke talk. And before you get all, all funky about your feelings, know this statistic that 79% of all millionaires are not inherited, meaning they worked for it. Meaning at some point, in all likelihood through the power of language, they were not wealthy. They were not abundant, at least from a finance perspective, and were probably broke. So how do rich people get rich and broke people stay broke? The reality is, is predicated off of many of what would be a, assigned to the laws of the universe in many forms. Neville Goddard talked about the law of assumption. There's also the law of attraction. And as I got into very briefly, the hermetic laws around vibration and frequency, the pendulum, and that the world in its entirety is one collective consciousness. And that everything you think eventually formulates itself into feelings and it eventually starts to vomit out of your mouth. And whatever it is you vomit out of your mouth is essentially returned to you by the universe on the frequency you send it out in. And so complainers who complain habitually, the universe can't help but return it more things to complain about. Those who speak in lack and deficiency, the universe can't help but return it continued lack and deficiency. Those who feel weak, those who feel frustrated angry, depressed, on and on and on, the universe has no choice but to return to you exactly what you put out. It is essentially a feedback loop. And it starts with how you think about things. Because again, how you think produces your feeling, which then produces the vibration of the words that you vomit out of your mouth. And interestingly enough, if you break down what words are and how you create a word, you have to spell it. And so you can think of your words as a spell you cast out into the universe. And, and along the evolution of your life, if you can really process what this means, the reality of what you think of yourself, because you are who you think you are, you can't tell me you aren't, because that's what you are, and you know it. You don't have to agree with me or, 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 or say it out loud. Just think to yourself. If you are who you think you are, the frustration that should hit you as far as the difficulties you're seeing for yourself in life is this. You were taught how to think all the way back to childhood, all the way back to your, your, your inception of consciousness and how you were developed. Meaning, when you were told at a very young age, you can't, you won't, you will not, you have carried over all of those thoughts, processes, and beliefs into your adulthood and your physical body matures and ages, yet you are stuck in an adolescent mindset, never having realized that the limitations you have for yourself are self-inflicted. And they're self-inflicted more egregiously from the perspective of you were taught these things and you haven't yet figured out how to teach yourself to break those limitations. 
given the choice to live delusionally rich and abundant or realistically broke and miserable comes down to how you think these things because what you think, again, is what you will speak and what you will speak will be returned to you. So what do I do? The reality comes down to your ability to come to consciousness and awareness that your thoughts and what you think are, are, are essential and vital to your growth. And if you can think of another law that exists in this universe as far as frequency and vibration and the lack you might perceive for yourself, the law of polarity, this is what I use that has been absolutely foundational and critical and just explosive for my, for my, for my, for my growth for self. self. The law of polarity suggests this, that each event or each mood or each output has opposite ends of the spectrum. There's a north and a south. There's a left and a right. There's an up and a down. And neither can exist without the other. It is impossible. For you wouldn't know down without up. You wouldn't know left without right. You wouldn't know north without south. In the same way, when your vibration and frequency is low and you're feeling sad and angry and dark, you are literally on the same spectrum. Hear me out and understand the logic. Sad, angry, and dark equate to happy, motivated, and light. For the minute you think sad, the alternative is obviously happy. The minute you think broke, the alternative is rich. The minute you go dark, the alternative is light. It is just your choice to choose what end of the spectrum you feel on. So when you're lazy and doom scrolling your life away and not realizing what happened and you finish and you say, I'm so tired of wasting my time, it is because you have acknowledged that there is time you can be more efficient with. When you feel depressed, it is because you acknowledge that you could feel happy. When you feel broke, it is because you can acknowledge on the opposite end of that spectrum, you could be rich. So what you want to start to do is effective right now, play with your thoughts, come to consciousness, become aware that whatever you feel on one end, there's an opposite end and start to slowly migrate yourself towards the more positive end of the spectrum. And the worst that could happen is this. You walk around on, in your inner self, your inner world, your inner emotions, delusionally rich and abundant. And that's all that should matter. So that's principle one, or at least I should say concept one as far as your words, your language, and how your thoughts impact it and how the universe will return exactly what you see. The next thing is body language. There's a law, I think it's 73855. There's a researcher in UCLA, his name eludes me at the moment, and I'm not going to press stop to go look at it on the recording because I'm flowing, baby. Woo! Anyhow, the 55%. The 55%, 7, 8, 35. 7% are the actual words you speak. 38% is the tone in which you speak the words. And we're talking about language. And 55% of how you communicate is body language. And immediately, most of us equate this science and logic to when we're conversing or speaking or trying to analyze and assess someone across from us so we can judge, critique, and feel like that we're better than them somehow. I'm not judging either, or don't get all in your funky feelings. I'm just telling you the logic of life. But let's focus on the 55%, which is body language. And it is said, if you want to start to you know, play around with this, when you're speaking to someone, especially if you catch them off guard and you, you tap them on the shoulder, hey, what's up? And they see your face, the immediate reaction you get is their real subconscious thought, which is really how they feel about you. So before they crack that fake smile, if you could catch what they're really thinking, their body language will tell you everything you need to know about how they really feel about you. Anyhow, that's not the point of the conversation for today. Language, going back to the universe and how it perceives you. When you speak weak talk, your body carries itself in physical form in a weak way. If you ever look at someone who is a little self-conscious, who is a little insecure, who is full of self-doubt, how do they walk around? Head down, dragging their feet, 
shoulders all slumped. It doesn't matter what you say. I don't even need to care or hear the words that are coming out of your mouth. Your language, your internal language affects how you look and how you present out to the universe. And why would you want to walk around, at least perceptually, because you can change that too by coming to consciousness, roll your shoulders back, how they say in the military, keep your head high, keep your chin up. There's a book that says a way to practice keeping your head up is think about walking through a doorway and you're trying to kind of almost bang your head on the doorway. You keep your chin and your head high. Why? Because all of this body language speaks to your level of confidence, your level of faith, your level of, of richness that is internal to you. So when you have weak self-talk, your body carries itself weak. And then you get all sloppy. And then you get all, again, you're getting funky in your feelings, but this is the truth and the reality. But your, your physical vibration is low. And so when your inner vibration is low, your physical vibration is low, then the world that you attract around you and how people begin to treat you and how people begin to react to you and the type of relationships that you built or build are highly predicated off of how you carry yourself as a human. And if you want to be successful in any one of your endeavors, even in your relationships, like you, you let's, think, let's talk professionally first. If you've ever been in any kind of meeting, and I, I, I have a seat at the table, and I'll tell you this, if you sit at the table with the people who are dominating business and running businesses, none of them walk in like they're having a bad day. None of them walk in like, 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 like they feel terrible about themselves. None of them are, are, are physically, visibly appearing to be weak. They walk head up. They sit in their chairs confidently. They stand up and speak confidently. Their, their vibration and their tone, you can tell when someone is confident when they speak and how they assert themselves. Those people... And, and it's, there's, there's, status, there's data and studies that suggest the people who speak at a higher, more confident, effective level in business always get promoted, always get promoted. It doesn't mean that they become great managers, great leaders. It's just the world perceives them to be more, to be more, or more efficient, more thorough, and more complete because of how they carry themselves. It's facts. Look it up. And so... Your body language in business is everything. People perceive how confident you are when, you, when you're handling your business, right? If you ever walk, let's think about a car, right? You ever bring your car to a mechanic and that mechanic looks like he doesn't know what he's doing? You know, ah, I'm good. You take your car out, right? And on and on and on across the spectrum. You never want to get into any sort of business with someone who doesn't look like they know what they're doing. And when you carry yourself weakly with your shoulder slump and your head down, that's, that's how you look. Not good. Also, I always go back to this because this, this to me is the core and the, and the principle and the foundations for life. The richness you seek, your home life, like you're coming home angry with a snarl on your face because you got a shitty boss and a shitty job and you had a shitty day at the office and now your wife, your husband, your significant other, your kids pick up on that energy. They don't really want to talk to you. They don't want to approach you. Now there's all this unresolved conflict. You're like, ah, pushing everybody off, pushing everything away because you just want to get into a, a mode where, where you're watching the NBA finals or, 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 or Netflix in your life away because you, you, your body language and everything is down because of everything you see in your world and everything you've had in your professional life sucks. And now your home life sucks. And on and on and on and on. Pick yourself up. Walk into your house with a smile on your face. Pull up in the garage or get off the bus to train or walk or run however you get home on your bike. I don't care. But when you come in, walk in your house happy and watch how that impacts the relationships in your world. All right. So we got some universal damage we're working on. We got some body language and physical damage we're working on. And now let's talk about language and knowing your audience, particularly if you're like me and you're from where I'm from. My hood life, and I mean this with all, with all love and respect, and, and one of the things that has significantly impacted me on my endeavor and my professional career and how I'm able to, to get a seat at the table, although on the surface I may not check some boxes, right? So if you can't tell in my tone, it's obvious that I'm, I'm probably from New York, right? And when you get into business, particularly I'm in a global business where it can, I can be talking to people across the country, 
I can be pe- talking to people across the states. And so New Yorkers and this accent has, has, a, has an impact on how people immediately perceive you. And, and I don't care what you feel about perception. It's reality. People judge. It's, they can't help it. It's life. It is what it is. So when people hear how you speak and how you articulate yourself with your words, it has massive influence on the success you have or don't have in your life. Going back to rich and abundant, broken, miserable. So coming where I'm from, I can go to the hood, pull it back to where I'm from. Yo, my G, what's good, dog? Hey, everything is... I can get real quick right back into that Ebonic swing and I can talk that talk and it makes sense because that's my audience. And so when I'm there... I relate myself. I articulate myself on that level. It doesn't mean it's a high level, low level. I'm just saying that my my environment, my home environment, how I was raised, I can articulate myself in that fashion and build strong relationships because of my language. Now, you go into the office and you go into a Fortune 10 company or you want to become CEO or you want to scale out or whatever it is you want to have an impact on and you start that, yo, what's good, my G? And I'm not saying that talk is wrong. What I'm saying is, is your audience going to accept that? Is that going to allow you to have the level of influence you need to expand your world and your life? The likelihood is no. Why? Because everyone doesn't talk like that. And so the power of influence through language becoming highly articulate is, is not just being able to speak through words at a higher expansive level. It's not the $10 words or the SAT words or whatever it is that, 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 that fluffs you up and gives your persona a higher degree of eloquence. It's the fact that I can go into a room, gauge my audience and know, okay, this is the type of language I need to use in order to be successful in this environment. I can go into, well, again, back to my environment where I grew up and know that, all right, when I speak like this, I can, and I, you know, I can use that to be influential. And then when you get really good, you can use the power of who you are at your core and who you've grown into because I can use my $10 words and I can use my bonics and my slang and I can marry the two and actually come off as even more authentic because I'm bringing the truth of who I am into this higher perceived environment, which then subconsciously makes other people break their mask of, of, of language and, and what they're putting on for a show in whatever the world and the environment that you're in, the audience that you're in is. And then, and then things become more relatable, right? That's the power of language and, as a, of influence. It doesn't always have to be uptight. You can break the ice, but, but you can be formal when you need to be formal, informal when you need to be informal, casual, etc. But language and how you speak and how you open your mouth and the words you use absolutely have an influence on the power you have in life. The word and your words are everything. And if you can think about the most influential book, the most, the most purchased book in the world, it is the Bible. And it is all what? A word. And if you learn anything about the word, it is this. Whether you believe or not, align or not, or this language is your language. The power of creation, universe, and God is in us all. And it manifests itself through our thoughts, which lead to our feelings, and the words you vomit out of your mouth. So your choice, be delusionally rich and abundant, or be realistically broke and miserable. Change your mind, change your life. I am who I say I am. Stay rich.